Hey, it's Jared. Let's talk about 10 things you need to know before purchasing an Inspire 3. Now, this is a very expensive drone, and DJI has leveled up every single time they have introduced a new Inspire, and they've really figured out who this drone is for over the last several years as well. And they've built the features and the functionality into the drone that that type of person needs. So we're going to talk about 10 things. Some of them are things that you need to know when purchasing this drone, and some of them are expensive experience that I've had from flying this drone over the last several weeks. The first thing that you need to know is it is not RTF. It's not ready to fly out of the box. You need to buy a lens for it. And you would think at the over $16,000 price point that it might come with something that you can use as far as a lens goes, but you do need to purchase a lens and that's going to tack on at least another $1,200 to the price point of this drone, making it even more expensive. So you do need to purchase a lens and there are right now, I believe four lenses uh, from DJI that are available. And there are some aftermarket lenses that I've seen some people trying that are for the DL mount. They're not necessarily for the Inspire. They are made for the Ronin 4D, but I've seen people trying to put them on this drone. I probably don't recommend that. When you buy this drone, you're going to need to buy a lens for it as well. I opted to go with the 24 millimeter. I think the brand new 18 millimeter is is going to be a great lens. It might be a little wide for what I typically am going to be shooting, but it's also not out yet. So I'm still waiting for that. Yeah, I have one on pre-order and I'll definitely be doing a comparison in the future because lenses, I mean, you're already putting out this kind of money to put out another four five, almost $6,000 for a package of lenses is a lot on top of, uh, of the price point of this drone. The second thing to know is that photo and video only records to the SSD, which is removable. The new SSD slots right into the top of the drone and it's USB-C, which means you could just plug a USB-C cable into this and transfer files from it without having to use any sort of a dock, which is fantastic. The only problem is, is that this is one terabyte and it's also $800. And if you're gonna be shooting in any raw formats, you're gonna be eating up a lot of data, which means you're gonna to need to purchase a few of these. So at $800 and it's proprietary and the way it fits, you're gonna be spending a lot of money on memory but you can't record anything to a micro SD card anymore. There's no micro SD card slot, so you have to use the SSD that is available from DJI, and you have to purchase more of those at $800 a pop. One of the things that I do wanna test, even though I don't think I would ever fly the drone that way, is to see if I could plug a cable in there and then actually like uh, Velcro attach or something, a SSD to the side of the drone with a little cable running out. It might be a cheaper way at getting some memory I'm not sure if that would even work in the first place, but it would be something worth trying considering one terabyte SSDs are $800 and you can go buy 100 terabyte SSDs from pretty much anywhere else for around $100. Another thing to know about that SSD is that I did try plugging it into a USB-C hub that I use at my desk and it wouldn't recognize it. I actually had to plug that in directly to the side of my MacBook Pro in order for it to work. So if you're wondering why you can't get yours to work, that is how you get it to work. Plug it directly into your computer as opposed to a, a USB type C hub. Number three is that it comes with one RC control and that RC plus is very expensive and it has a lot of functionality. I am blown away at that form factor and all of the functionality that's built into it and how intuitive it is to use it when I was flying this drone for the very first time. It was very easy for me to pick up and kind of figure out what all the controls did and even reprogram some of the buttons to do different things so that I had some custom buttons. But in single operator mode, that's all you're gonna get. You're gonna need a second RC in order to utilize camera controls separate from the piloting of this drone. And this drone is best used when piloting it with a co-pilot, somebody who is piloting the camera versus maybe you or someone piloting the drone itself. Now, because it has a single camera up front for that POV, that point of view camera, you can be looking where you're going, but if you need to be going in a different direction for any reason, this is your only point of view. And so if your actual camera is pointing in a different direction and you're trying to do single operator mode, it gets a little tricky. You're not seeing 
the direction that you're going, you're relying on the X9 camera instead, which is fine. It's actually really high resolution, and as long as you're pointing in the appropriate direction, it is just fine, but it's much better of an experience in dual operator mode where you have somebody piloting the drone, paying attention to where the drone is going, and then you have a second operator controlling that camera by themselves. Another thing to know about the RC that comes with the drone is that it comes with the strap and waist support system, so you can more easily hold the control without having to hold the entire weight in your hands, and that's a nice support system to have. If you purchase a second control, you're not going to get that, so you actually have to purchase a separate set with the strap and the waist support, which is around $100. The fourth thing to know is that the RC itself has built-in battery, but there's an expandable battery. A lot of people were saying, oh, well, the battery is hot swappable, and they didn't really expand upon that. The internal battery in the RC can be charged up just like any any other DJI RC, and then you can add an additional battery to the back of it. That additional battery operates as an extension to the internal battery, and that's why it's hot swappable. As long as your RC has some battery life left in it, you can remove that battery and pop a new one in without powering down your drone. The drone itself also is hot swappable, but there has to be enough power in one of the batteries to last while you take the other battery off and swap it, and then of course you can swap the last battery. One of the things that happened when I was hot swapping my batteries was I took one battery off, I got an instant low power notification, which kind of frightened me at first. I thought, oh no, I better hurry, but it, it it's totally fine as long as your drone is just sitting there not doing anything, which you shouldn't be hot swapping batteries while anything is live. You have plenty of time to hot swap those batteries and it worked really well. The one challenge is that getting the batteries seated back into the drone is a little hard. And so I tend to just kind of grab on really close and just pu push gently as I apply pressure and push that battery in to seat it. And I know that will probably loosen up a little bit over time, but it is a little bit challenging and can be a little bit scary when everything is turned on and the drone is shaking as you're trying to push the battery in. And you really need to assure that that battery fully seats and connects and then shows up on the RC as having battery power because I put one of the batteries on, I thought I had it fully seated, and it wasn't, and it wasn't recognizing the battery, so I had to eject the battery and then reattach it, and it was fine. So make sure that your batteries are fully connected before you start flying. Number five is understanding the resolutions, frame rates, and all of that stuff. There is a massive data file that has just all sorts of different information that's a little confusing if you don't know what you're looking at. But essentially, if you buy this drone and don't get the raw unlock, you're going to get ProRes 422 up to 8.1K at 30P. In order to unlock that 60P, you have to have the raw unlock because that 8.1K at 60P is a DNG format and not a ProRes standard format. So if you want that 8.1 at 60P, you're going to have to get the raw unlock. Now, number six is that this drone comes with three sets of batteries, which gets you quite a bit of flight time, depending on how you fly, how you operate, and how effective and efficient you are when you're in the air with this drone. The case itself has space for an additional two sets of batteries, so I highly recommend ordering a couple of extra sets so that you have that expanded flight time. Number seven is that really the average flight time on this drone is around 22 minutes. It's advertised at 28 minutes, but some people have been reporting only being able to get 28 minutes with the landing gear down and in certain circumstances. I flew through multiple sets of batteries flying around with the gear up and down, doing single operator mode and having it fly waypoints and doing all that stuff. And the average amount of time that I got was around 22 minutes, which is pretty good considering everything that's going on here. I'm definitely not mad about that, but I'm definitely glad that it comes with three sets of batteries and I have two extra sets of batteries on the way. Number eight has to do with single operator mode. If you're thinking about buying this drone and flying it yourself, it's very capable and possible to utilize this drone in a single operator situation. However, when you are operating, I highly recommend flying it and setting waypoints and then letting the drone fly those waypoints so that you know that they're safe waypoints before then going and controlling the 
camera yourself. If you're flying the drone and trying to control the camera or pointing it in an appropriate direction so that you know what direction the drone's going and the camera is going in the same direction, it could be a little tricky, especially if you want to adjust the camera and you go and adjust the camera. Now your camera and the direction of your drone are not pointing in the same direction. So if you have waypoints enabled and you uh, are flying a set of waypoints that you've already flown once and set up, and know are safe, then you know that you're not gonna be running into anything. All you need to do is control how fast you wanna go, and then you can control the camera, point the camera in any direction you want, knowing that the drone is gonna follow the waypoints that you previously set up and know are safe. So this drone is very capable as a single operator, and I know for myself, I primarily will be using it as a single operator. It just means being smart and taking the extra time to utilize the tools that this drone provides so that you could be safe and effective and get the shots that you need. Number nine is that the, the video quality is in the details with this drone. A lot of people have been asking me like, yeah, isn't the Mavic 3 Pro plenty for what you do? And yes, at many times the Mavic 3 Pro is going to be plenty. For those further away shots where I'm capturing bigger scenes and I don't need finer details because things are very small off in the distance, the Mavic 3 Pro is gonna be absolutely fantastic for that. If I'm going and flying and just trying to capture B-roll footage with the drone, nothing that really focuses on anything specific but just shows the overall scene, the Mavic 3 Pro is really the perfect drone for that. Where you utilize a drone like this is when you need the finer details. The reason why you would be using a higher end camera to capture uh, whatever it is that you're capturing because you need the details, you need the dynamic range, and this drone provides that. The Mavic 3 Pro is fantastic, but it doesn't provide that unless the situation is perfect. And the situation is never perfect. So you need a drone that has the additional bandwidth to be able to handle that. And this drone does. And that's why I decided to purchase it. So the quality really is in the details with this drone because of the camera package that it has and the capabilities it has as a drone that you can't get in any other drone. And number 10 is that the Inspire 3 really is a production platform. It's not a drone that you just go and fly and you put up in the air and you go and capture some stuff. Yes, you can do that, but that's not utilizing it to the full extent. This is a production platform and that's what makes it different than any Inspire in the past and any of the other drones that are available in this type of class, which really this drone stands alone in its own class. It is a platform in which you can have a drone operator flying and controlling the drone and its direction. You can have a camera operator controlling the camera and getting the shots and you can have a focus puller making sure that all of your shots are sharp and all of those people working together including maybe a spotter as well which would be great to have on your team means that this is a full production platform and not something that you're just going to go and use for recreational use especially at this price point so consider that when purchasing this drone even though earlier i said that I primarily will be using this in single operator. It's mainly just because of the environments that I end up in. I'm in a lot of wide open spaces and have a lot of area. I'm not flying in cities or towns where things are very busy and there's a lot of stuff going on where we've got to pull permits and do all of this crazy stuff and be accountable to local infrastructure and everything. It's definitely much trickier when you are flying in those scenarios and it requires a team to be with you and working with you to make sure that you're successful. And this platform is built out to support all of those people. And that's what's great about it. And it's why the cost of this drone really just gets started at over $16,000. You're really looking at closer to $30,000 if you build this drone out to its full production platform with all the lenses, with the extra batteries, with the extra RCs, the extra monitors, the equipment for pulling focus, and all of that stuff is gonna cost a lot of money and it is a platform for shooting high-end commercials, for shooting features and shorts and stuff like that where quality and control matter. So I hope this video helped you think through a little bit more about the Inspire 3. There's definitely a lot of great videos out there where people talk about how good the camera is or how much fun it is to fly and stuff like that. But I found a lack of information where people really talked practically about this drone and understood what it came with and how it could be used out there in the different environments that you find yourself in. For me, it is an all-in-one platform that I can use solo and know that if I need to expand out and actually utilize a team to capture 
capture something more dynamic, then I can do that with a drone like this, or I can't do that with something like my Mavic 3 Pro. So let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Do you have any questions about this drone? I'm definitely going to be flying it a lot more and bringing back more thoughts and opinions on it as I have more experience with it. So your questions will help me better understand what to cover in those videos as well. I use the links in the description if you decide to pick one of these up. I purchased mine from B&H Photo and purchased the extended warranty and the raw unlock and the lens and a few other extra accessories from B&H Photo and their shipping is extremely fast and I fully trust them having been a customer for so long knowing that they're going to support me where I know customer support can sometimes be a little tricky with DJI. So give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and I hope to see you back in another one soon. Take care.